Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss the legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedoms and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staver, the President and General Counsel of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country in the courtrooms of America. Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedoms. Liberty Council files a brief with the United States Supreme Court asking the court to uphold the FCC's decency standards. Hi, I'm Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council. Joining me is Matt Barber, the vice president of Liberty Council Action. And this is an amicus brief that Liberty Council did, and it is filed on behalf of Dr. Judith Reisman, a Ph.D. and internationally recognized expert in media forensics and the effects of the work of Dr. Alfred Kinsey on society and the family. And it's in reference, Matt, to the FCC's decency standards. There's some organizations like Fox News. In fact, this is uh, FCC versus Fox. And there's others uh, that are asking for these decency standards to be overturned. Yeah, and, and, and it's unfortunate. You know, as our culture continues to evolve, uh, we see more and more that Hollywood and even the news media, that they are really pushing, I think, to desensitize people and, and really want unlimited uh, – the unlimited ability to show anything and everything without adherence to our, our dec- de- decency standards, which, you know, if I've got three young kids myself. If I'm sitting at home uh, and we're watching television, I don't want, you know, uh, foul language and, and nudity and things uh, popping up on the screen. And this is to protect families and to protect children and to protect individuals. So at, at what point does, you know, absolute – Moral relativism and the and the chaotic idea that anything goes. Uh, when does that take over our culture? Well, well, they're they're pushing forward in the courts, and we're pushing back. That's right. And what they're asking the court to do is to strike some of these FCC decency standards as unconstitutional under the First Amendment, saying that some of them are too vague and they violate their First Amendment rights. The problem is, is that. This is a little different, First Amendment rights within the FCC broadcasting than it is in going to a public park and speaking. Obviously, in there, a public park, street, sidewalk, those are historic forms of people being able to gather and and to speak together. So you obviously have a lot of extra protections of the First Amendment. But in the broadcasting network, we've always treated these broadbands or these uh, networks, this broadcasting uh, ability – uh, as something that there is a certainly a First Amendment right, but it's less because there's only a certain amount of space, and that has to be regulated. Plus, it is very pervasive. Unlike a public park where you don't have to go there, if you're turning on the TV at mm-hmm. 8 or 9 o'clock at night and you're there with your family and you're watching a family-friendly uh, movie and all of a sudden some explicatives comes on or some nudity comes on or other kinds of indecent language comes on or maybe the commercials come on in between, uh, you are you have no warning. You have no choice. You're just assaulted. You're kind of a captive audience. You're a captive really, yeah. audience with your children and you want not to have your children exposed and you don't want to be exposed to that kind of vulgarity, obscenity or even bordering on pornography. And that's why uh, there is a stricter requirement for what you can do and say in those broadcast media. They're wanting to literally throw off the lid so they can do anything. The problem that that would cause is already we have enough uh, debauchery and (laughs) language uh, on TV. When you're watching, for example, uh, a family movie like um, Andy Griffith or something like that, and then the commercials come on and it's – something that just literally assaults your your conscience and throws a language in your face, it's offensive. And you can't sit down and watch with your children. And so that's what these uh, restrictions are about. That's what Liberty Council did as we filed a brief urging the court to uphold those FCC standards. Well, and the restrictions are there for a reason. And, and what possible good does it do to, to society to remove those restrictions? As you pointed out, this is not a, a cut and dry uh, a case of, of free speech and a violation of the First Amendment. These are common sense uh, restrictions that are placed on a, a public form of, of communication that, as you mentioned, reaches into people's living rooms. I think it's it's a, quite a stretch to say that our founding fathers, uh, who didn't understand the, t- the te- technological uh, advances that would occur in our culture, I think it's a stretch to say that they would believe that, you know, um, um, 
obscenity it would be should should be readily available on public television and in in uh, our living rooms, and that somehow the Constitution uh, would not uh, allow some kind of common sense restrictions on that type of, of obscenity. It's it's quite a stretch to say that that's the case, but here we are. Well, in Dr. Judith Reisman's case, she's a recognized expert internationally in media forensics and also the effects of the works of Dr. Alfred Kinsey mm-hmm. on society and the family. And so the brief actually focuses on some of her expertise in terms of how these words ultimately impact individuals and how especially they can impact or images can impact uh, young children even more so than adults. And she's actually done some research about pornography, for example, and some of those images, how they actually do a chemical brain change on children. And so they essentially almost sear that into the children's brain or conscience, so to speak. So it has a a negative impact on them, and and thus another reason why society ought to be concerned about some of the language and some of the images uh, that are shown during prime time. Well, her research and the research of many others is remarkable. It's amazing what it's showing. It shows that uh, this kind of visual stimuli, particularly for children, but for adults as well, we see uh, adult men who become attic- addicted to internet uh, pornography, pornography, for instance. It completely changes the neural pathways in the brain. They become it becomes a physiological addiction because as they uh, – and, and for children too, as they see these salacious images, uh, dopamine is created in the brain. It becomes a physically ad- addicted thing and it changes the processes in the brain. This is some some uh, wild stuff, but that's just another reason, particularly as it relates to children. That's just another reason why these standards should remain in place to protect kids from those kinds of, of physiological changes and the ill effects that that can occur. That's right. Well, uh, you can read our brief at Liberty Council's website. You can go to lc.org. You can click on the press release regarding Liberty Council's brief urging the court to uphold the FCC standards. This was filed at the United States Supreme Court, so it's public record. And you can actually download the brief by going to Liberty Council's website, lc.org. I encourage you to read it and also share it with with your friends. But This is a voice uh, that we have been able to be uh, in this situation. This case will ultimately be argued uh, later this fall, and we'll have a decision from the high court sometime early in 2012. And uh, we'll continue to watch this case and see it develop. But continue to keep this case in your prayer as it's uh, ultimately argued before the high court. Yeah, Matt, uh, you know, I'm – can you know can be a conspiracy buff sometimes, but I, I think there's a deeper issue here. I believe that this is by design. That there are those uh, who who like to see or using media, using television, using various forms of multimedia in order to affect social engineering and cultural change. And and if anything goes, if they can remove the the barriers that we have had relative to morality and and these things from the airways, we know. No that entire cultures can be changed and, and, and people are desensitized. We see programs like Glee, this radical homosexual uh, pr- promotion. It, it, it's nothing but pure indoctrination on television, uh, masquerading as entertainment. And we've seen that children are watching this in droves, and it is having the effect of changing their viewpoints on all form of various uh, sexually immoral behaviors. So it works. They understand it works. So they want those restrictions removed so they can affect social and cultural change. Yeah, there's no, I think there's no question about that. There is a broader agenda that's behind wanting to eliminate these uh, FCC sure. standards. And that's why Liberty Council is standing there. And we filed the brief on behalf of Dr. Judith Reisman and her book, the newest one called Sexual Sabotage, is a book that you ought to get. We have it in our Liberty Council library. You can go to lc.org and order a copy of this book. She has several books on Kinsey and the effects of Kinsey and his fraudulent research. But this is her most recent book. It contains a lot of that material in this one uh, at Sexual Sabotage by Dr. Judith Reisman. She is an international expert. In fact, she will be uh, internationally speaking uh, around the world uh, in Rome uh, re- in the next uh, few weeks. Addressing and also, the Vatican. And mm-hmm. she will address uh, some uh, high-ranking uh, uh, members of the, uh, the Vatican. And uh, she's also been uh, going uh, throughout Europe as well. And uh, I would encourage you to get the book, Sexual Sabotage by Dr. Judith Reisman. You can also order the book, Take Back America. That's also on our website. That's my newest edition of Take Back America. And uh, then again, of course, the Patriot's Handbook on 
American Liberty, which has the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and other documents there. All of those resources and more are available at lc.org. Also, when you go to Liberty Council's website, give us a call or uh, ask information. Uh, make sure that uh, you remember Liberty Council in prayer. And also, uh, your financial contributions are much appreciated. It's a donor-supported ministry, and you can contribute on Liberty Council's website, lc.org. You can also text us for a $10 contribution, 20222, and put in the subject line LC, 20222, subject line LC. You can also sign up on Facebook to be one of the fans of Liberty Council and keep up with what we're doing, facebook.com forward slash Liberty Council. You have been listening to Matt Staver of Liberty Council. Our hope is to encourage and inspire you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedoms. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email update. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom. 